so friends welcome to the part 57 if you are wondering where is part 56 so it is in the members area so you can click the join button below this video or go to the description there is a link join and become a cloud kernel member that will give you access to important questions for a very small premium okay it is even lesser than udemy courses now the the way i try to present these questions is i try to solve these questions through the solutions i try to explain uh, the concepts so this is a unique way of learning things now you can go through udemy courses or other courses the problem i faced with those courses is that first of all they are always in a hurry to uh, explain and close the topics because otherwise the overall course might become uh, 40 hours 50 hours okay the second is like i'm talking about guys like stephen merrick so uh, i uh, when i started my cloud journey uh, like four years back so i went through that course the problem is that it was so fast that i had to pause it like i reduced the speed and then i used to go back and go through the aws documentation to understand what he told then i used to think in my real world in the real project how will we implement this and why are we going this way so please bring that thought into perspective uh, through these questions i try to bring those thoughts into perspective these are all real questions sometime or the other every day or alternate day some sometime this question is coming now the problem uh, is that if you don't solve real questions you will never try to uh, get a hang of how things work in real life second what is important for certification so it is very important for you to subscribe gain this uh, you know take the advantage of this unique way of learning this is the cloud guru ninja is the handle youtube handle you can search for many shorts playlist by the way there are 500 plus videos 2800 questions on aws google cloud azure snowflake and recently we have started putting contents around salesforce tableau as well so take advantage of this subscribe become a member cloud kernel member so that you can get a holistic view of all the questions so let us look at this question now okay which controls does aws fully inherit in the shared responsibility model the customer fully inherits that means see shared responsibility model there are certain things which you as a customer will do those are marked in blue here okay now there are certain things which aws will do those are marked in orange or amber this is a bit confusing this question when it says fully inherits that means aws does it and you as a customer just rely on that when someone says uh, like your father has a house and you are fully inheriting that house that means your father built it and for your father is going to give it to you okay that 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 is how it works that means your father built it similarly here aws does that did it and you are inheriting it so basically it is asking this orange stuff this amber stuff here what is aws responsibility in the moment i see physically physical that means physically i can get into aws campus the data centers but i know as a customer i cannot get in will aws allow you no they will not allow so this is something which definitely aws has to do it you cannot do it because you are first of all you don't know where is the data center the the exact address second even if you know there are a lot of security guys they will not allow you to get in even if you get in you are not that is not your role you will not know what physical access physical controls you how how you can access it okay so this is totally wrong remaining three patch management controls awareness configuration management you can do it as a customer you can use aws config for configuration management okay those kind of things so this would be my final answer 
Now let us look at this question, the next one. And this is an interesting question. See, they are building a some application for time tracking. Okay. So first key, first indicator is they are building a mobile app. Second is they want to operate globally. Who operates globally? Uber. Consider Uber. And you must store collected data in a database. Data must be accessed from AWS region that is closer to the user. So Uber, if you have the app, if you are in USA, you can still book the app. It will go to the AWS region in USA. If you are in India, it will go to the AWS region in India. If you are in Singapore, it will go there. If you are in UK, it will go to the AWS region near to UK. So what should the company do to meet data storage? That means you want to un understand where should you store the data with least operational efforts, least amount of operational overhead. That means here cost is not important. They are saying we want to minimize operational overhead. First thing I'll tell you, my indicators are the one indicator is I am building a mobile app. Second indicator is it is a global stuff. Okay. And third indicator is they want a database. Okay. Simple. These all are indicating to use DynamoDB. This is a NoSQL database. In short, this is a database on steroids. So very high performance, very high. Like, and that's why it is not cost, it is not cost effective. I'll tell you it is it is way too expensive. Okay. Uh, but you know, very useful for applications like Uber, Lyft, uh, real time, you have to do so many things. And it is global. Global means if, uh, you know, it's, it can be replicated to multiple regions. So the moment you go to USA, still you can access your data and still you can make the bookings. Your credentials, login ID will still work. So that, that is the uh, real life example of Uber is a real life example of how this works. Now A is saying that you use EC2 in multiple regions to host separate databases. So what will happen is EC, you have a database inside the EC2 instance. Now you will have to replicate to multiple regions yourself. Create a replication routine. There will always be time lag. Suppose today you travel to US. You go there. Your data has not been replicated. You are not able to make bookings now. So that is not good. Now here it is saying we will use RDS and cross region replication. So cross region replication still the replication takes so much of time. Okay. And it is not a faster way. It, it, it is not a global database RDS. And D is saying we will use data migration service. So see data migration is even slower than replication. You have one database here. Okay. And then you will use data migration to move the data to another database. It is very slow. When we are talking about real time scenarios, real time world. Uh, uh, who told me in the question this is real time because it is telling you simple time tracking mobile app. So if it is time tracking, it has to be real time. Otherwise, what is the use after four hours? You came to know that uh, you wasted two hours. <laughs> no use, right? It has to be real time. So there is an app called Strava. Real time, it tells you how many uh, steps you have walked or how many miles you have walked. So that's all real time use case. If, if it, it's delayed by one or two hours, people will not use it. So imagine you are walking and after two hours, it tells you, oh, you walked for 15 minutes only. And then you decide, oh my God, I was planning to walk for 30 minutes. It will not help you. So this is my final answer. Let us look at this question now. See, in this question, you want keyword. You want unintended, a report on unintended network access to EC2 instance. Why? Because you want to identify system vulnerabilities. That means it, this is a security question. Whenever I see vulnerability, I think of inspector. Whenever I see unintended network exposure, I think about inspector. Okay. So this is my answer. Now security groups B, it will only tell you why it is used. You know, you can put IPs there. You can say this IP can access this AC2 instance and the other IP cannot access. You can blacklist the IPs also. May see why it is used. Suppose you have lot of documents in S3. 
some documents have PII data, personal identifiable information. Uh, like what? Like your social security number, your passport numbers, credit card numbers. So there are tons of documents. How will you know which document has PII? You run Macy and Macy tells you, hey, you know what? These four documents, we find PII. Document one has social security number. Document two has your credit card information and so on. That is what Macy is useful for. So it is a very different purpose. It is not even linked anywhere close to this use case. Trusted advisor, it's a security kind of solution. It, it is a multi-purpose thing. It will give you understanding about how to you know, save costs, how to make your system highly performant, highly secured. So it is just like a, a consultant which you engage and it will give you a lot of uh, thought uh, leadership aspects. So this is my final answer. So you subscribe, please subscribe if you have not done, if you are serious about cloud certifications. Now we keep posting videos every day, both for in the members area, cloud kernel members area, as well as for subscribers, free subscribers. So make use of these videos. We have 500 plus videos on this channel and 2,800 plus questions on AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Tableau, Sales, uh, Salesforce, Tableau, and Snowflake, okay? So take this opportunity to get certified. Uh, this is the handle, YouTube handle. If you want to search for this channel, you can search on Cloud Guru Ninja. You can find so many shots as well. So do take this opportunity to visit shots. Stay tuned. Click the join button or use the link in the description to become a Cloud Kernel member. See you in the next part.